In yesterday's Towers and Gods episode, the traitor was finally revealed. If you haven't watched it yet, I highly recommend doing so. Next week's episode is going to be the last episode of the second floor arc. So if you want to join in on the fun, then check the link down below. Join the Discord. We have an awesome community of fans. And yeah, it's just so much fun. We hope to see you there. Before I even start, this video is going to be kind of controversial. Uh, don't take this as fact, okay? A lot of this stuff I'm gonna be wrong about. A lot of this is completely up to my opinion and just completely stuff that I've sort of gathered by, by my own interpretations of certain scenes and the lore that SIU has shared with us. So when I say something and it's like, oh, I think this could be the case, I'm sure there's gonna be you know, other pieces of evidence that don't back that up. So feel free to leave all that down below, but please don't criticize me too harshly. People have been bringing up the idea that what if the 10 families end up having to split and fight one another? What if some of the families end up siding with Jihad and some of the families end up siding with Bomb? And it sounds strange. It seems like the families would all be aligned with Jihad, but we know that's not the case. Gustang and the Povidao family are waging war against the Lopobia family and to an extent, and in extension, the Jihad Empire. So if the entire Pobidao family can do this, I think some of the other families could also be against Jihad in the near future, especially if Bom actually could bring down the Jihad regime. So let's start with pro-Jihad. The people who I don't believe would betray Jihad, I just don't think it would make sense. Maybe they would, like, later on, but from my perspective, these families seem pretty rock solid in their support of Jihad. The first one is obviously Lopobia, all right? We know Lopobia is never gonna betray Jihad, or if they do, it would take a lot. You know, it, we, they'd have to be like almost completely defeated. There's no way Lopobia is ever gonna become anti-Jihad because we know they're some of his staunchest supporters. We have two twin princesses that are from the Lopobia family. We have Rem, who joined the Royal Enforcement Division from the Lopobia family. And we know that this entire war, Lopobia is on like the front lines of this entire thing, this entire operation at the nest. There's no way Lopobia is staunchly pro-Jihad. But the other family that makes sense, the other family that I don't believe would ever betray Jihad is the Arie family. The Arie family, and Arie Han in particular, has always been close to Jihad. The only reason Arie Han, like, joined the group going up the tower and respects Jihad so much is because they had something like 10 different duels across uh, their, their early years, and Jihad beat Han every single time. And so, Jihad earned Han's respect. And so Han became his, like, right-hand man. There's no way. Like, and plus, Jihad gave the REA family so much power. And I feel like if you're the most powerful family head, and you're the most powerful family, there's no way you're going to turn that down. Like, REA Han and the REA family have everything they could ever want. So I don't see them ever betraying Jihad either. Now, this is where it gets a little tricky. I'm going to say that the Kuhn family would be pro-Jihad. And I know some people have told me that this is wrong, but something has always told me that there's no real reason for the Kuhn Kuhn family. There's no, there's no proof that I have that the Kuhn family would ever, you know, suddenly be like, no, we hate you, Jihad. You know, we, we think Kuhn Edwan's a stand-up guy. He's not. Okay? He is a trash parent, a trash family leader. He's trash, okay? I know Data Edwan is really cool and all, but Edwan from the present time literally has his kids kill each other for fun. To be fair, it's not his thing. He just kind of lets it happen. I don't care. He lets it happen. He has everything. Similar to Arye Han. He's lazy. He has all these wives. He's just chilling, dude. Why would he be like, you know what? I do want to fight Jihad. We know that the previous Edwan and the previous Jihad during their climb, they kind of, you know, were rivals in a sense. They didn't like each other that much. But the vibe that I get from those two is that they were kind of bros, you know what I mean? Like, Edwan was like, what happened to you? You're not like you previously were. And then when Jihad kind of went back to his previous self as Data Jihad, you know, when Data Jihad sort of remembered who he was, they were, you know, cracking jokes, but working together. I got this vibe that it was sort of like this typical, like, they argue all the time, but deep down, they actually do like each other. I don't know. Ultimately, I can see the Kuhn family being an obstacle. We've seen a lot of Kuhns that end up being obstacles to our main characters. Of course, obviously, a lot of good Kuhns as well. But ultimately, you know, it's the Kuhn family. You can't trust them. 
I'm sorry. Now what about the Hendo Lock family? I also think the Hendo Lock family would be pro-Jihad, because once again, his whole thing is immortality, living for a long time. This guy was the only one who couldn't get the immortality contract, and so his whole goal is I want to live forever. And I feel like when you see this rebel force rising, and the Jihad Empire is one of the reasons you're able to stay the way you are and be, you know, and just live your life, why would you be like, you know what? I want to fight Jihad, the guy who's keeping my life peaceful. And we know that Hendo Locke doesn't really, I mean, he's a warrior. I'm not saying he likes peace necessarily, but he wants to live forever. And why risk that by installing a new leader and, and like removing Jihad from the equation? Besides, we know that Blood Matter and Edwan were like best of the best of pals. They worked the best together. He was the defender. Edwan was the spear bearer. And I feel like if you split those two up, uh, I don't know. I'm kind of torn on Hendo Locke, but if I had to pick one, I think he'd be pro-Jihad. Then we get to the Yan family. Once again, the Yan family would also be pro-Jihad, I believe. I know, crazy that so many families would be pro-Jihad. The Yan family just kind of rubs me the wrong way. They harvest Zygana flowers, removing this ex endangered species, selling this jewel for so much money, even though it shouldn't be that valuable because they're making it rare by, kill you know, by basically killing these creatures because they need the flower to survive. And the entire vibe that I get from the Yan family is they're like a more corrupted version of the Ha family. I don't know if that's a good comparison, but they're both matriarchal, you know, but instead the Ha family actually has some stand up people, but the Yan family, I don't know, dude, Yan Hana just kind of, she sits on her, on her like high throne and just kind of doesn't do anything. Yan Alarde does a lot of the stuff and Yan Alarde just freaking, you know, she's like, okay, I'll have one dude every hundred years. I don't know. There's something about this family in comparison to other families, I love the Yan family, but when it comes to siding with Jihad, I think they definitely would. There's just no reason to, right? There's no reason why they would side with Bomb. Like, Bomb is this man, for one thing, who's trying to take down this other guy. Like, what reason would you have? We know that it took a long time for Iwa, who's a young girl, to warm up to the idea of, like, Bomb and just in general. How about the family head has been alive for 20,000 years being like, you know what? Yeah, I like you, kid. I'm gonna take down Jihad. Especially if my theory is correct in that Jihad turned down Yan Hana's love and that's why she hates men so much. I don't know. That's just my theory. Okay, that's basically it for Pro Jihad. The only family that sits dead center for me and could flip-flop either way 50-50 is the Tuperi family. And the only reason that I think they could be pro-Jihad is because I believe personally that Repolista is from a branch family of the Tuperi family. Don't know if that's confirmed. It's not confirmed, but in my head canon it is. And they have the operas. They're like such a huge asset to the Jihad family. And they, they, they're they very secluded. We don't see many of them, you know? We've been, we haven't even met a single Tuperi in the entire story. Like, why would they go against Jihad? One of those cases, I don't know. But at the same time, like, the little that we know of Tuperi Tuperi, he seems like a decent dude. And I don't know, like, the family might be decent as well. So that's why I'm 50-50. We barely know anything about this family. But okay, anti-Jihad time. Obviously, Pobedow family, it's confirmed. They're anti-Jihad. Gustang's sick of this whole entire thing. He basically is siding with this, this new force that's building up. He believes that this could be the time to make some change, make some changes. He's a really smart guy, and if he's doing this and is willing to stand up to the, the current structure, I mean, there's a fighting chance. Now, it seems strange because these two don't like each other, but I also think the Eurasia family would be pro or anti-Jihad. <laughs> I think she would be. I think she'd side with Bomb. I think the Eurasia family would. All of the Eurasias have seemed like pretty decent dudes, you know, the branch Eurasias or the Eurasias in general. And, you know, Eurasia and Jihad went insane and she did all these things corrupted by the princess system, right? Now, she, she didn't go crazy with the, the dual ignition, right? But, but you get what I'm saying. Like, she, she was corrupted by the princess system. And I feel like the mom and dad, Gusting and Blossom, wouldn't really be a fan of that. Like, Gusting introduced the princess system, but we know that Blossom, the, one of the reasons she broke up with Gusting was because, hey, that, that sucked, you know? Like, what, what the frick? And so I feel like she maybe has a grudge there. And the Eurasia family, once again, they just seem like decent people. Also, Irude has been with Bomb for a long time. And like, just sending these weird messages to people and talking about like, Bomb will fulfill my dream or our dream. And it's like, 
Maybe Iturde is acting as a kind of spy because Blossom or the family is wanting to know if Bomb is worth following. And I think he is. I think they're gonna see that he is and side with him over Jihad. Then we have the Ari family, which I also believe would be pro Bomb, anti Jihad. And the main reason for this is because I see the Ari family as a counterpart to the Arie family, right? Like, the, they're, they're related, obviously, and, well, if you didn't know that, they are related. The Arie family, super pro-Jihad, super strong blood, they use swords, even though swords aren't even good in the tower, but they make it good. And meanwhile, the Ari family, they're pacifists. They don't really like fighting. They make needles, you know what I mean? And there's this sort of vibe to the family that I get that is opposite of the Arie family, and so if the Arie family sides with Jihad, I just think it makes sense for the Ari family to side with Bomb, which also makes sense because if you didn't know, Ari Han and Ha Yurin were a thing. And I also think the Ha family would be pro-Jihad as well for obvious reasons. I think when it comes to the 10 families, this might be like the best family. I don't know if that's a good way to put it, but most of the Ha family members we've seen have been pretty stand up people. Not all of them, obviously, looking at you, Yura. But the vibe that I get from this family is one of like doing the right thing or like doing the honorable thing, even. And I think the honorable thing is, you know what? Jihad's had his time, he's screwed everything up, let's see what this kid can do. Yuri trusts him, Jin Sung trusts him, like, I don't know, I, I feel like the Ha family and Ha Yurin would see this as a good opportunity to finally make a difference and do something right. But again, those are all just my thoughts, and I honestly think that, you know, if we follow the story the way it is now, not this many people will be pro-bomb, but maybe. It depends on the situation, depends on the circumstances, and if they think it's worth following bomb to remove Jihad as a powerhouse, a tyrant, and as king. But what do you think? Let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to hear your thoughts, and once again, please check out Towers and Gods if you think you're interested in D&D plus Tower of God. The series has gotten so much better. You know, we have the art, we've got the music, and I've improved a lot when it comes to like my mic quality, and just everything has gotten way better. So. Even if you weren't a fan of like the earlier episodes, I think you would enjoy the later ones. So don't forget, tomorrow is a new Tower of God chapter, so I will be live at 8.45 p.m. Eastern Time. And yeah, I'll see you in my next Tower of God discussion video. Take care.